Let's go through how to change strings on an acoustic guitar. We're gonna do both a steel string acoustic and a nylon string acoustic too. There's not a lot of difference between changing strings on an acoustic and an electric, but there are some variations that you need to know about. So again, how can you tell when it's time to change your acoustic strings? You can go by how they look, feel, or sound. If they look really tarnished, it might be time to change your strings. If they sound really dull and thuddy and they're not bright anymore, it's probably time to change them. And then if they feel really rusty, it's definitely time to change them. I have a few tools that I'm gonna be using here as I change these strings. One is just a string winder, it makes changing them a lot faster. Also, on the end of that, some clippers too, so you don't poke yourself with loose ends of the string. I have a polished cloth to polish the guitar up. You may as well do that while you have the strings off. And then finally, I just have this neck rest that puts the guitar in a little bit better position to be working on it. So start off the same way you did with an electric. Just loosen the string you're gonna take off. Take it off of there. And the main difference between changing strings on an acoustic and electric comes to the bridge of the guitar, right? These are called bridge pins and they're typically what holds the string in place on an acoustic guitar. And one thing that helps get these out a little bit easier, a couple things actually, is this little string winder tool has a little notch on the end of it designed to help pop these out. A lot of times though, what you wanna do is push that string in and it makes it a little bit easier. It takes the tension off of that pin, it makes it easy to get out, right? So get rid of that. If there's any junk under here, just give it a clean off. Then I'm gonna grab these. Again, these are color, color coded strings. So you know exactly which string goes where. The gold ones on Diderio's or like the bronzy gold one are the low E strings. So take this. Put it down in the hole on the bridge, and then you're gonna take the bridge pin and shove it down there, not all the way. Once you have it down there a little bit, pull up on the string to seat it to make sure it's making good contact and then push down on the bridge pin to make sure it's seated well. You can even reach under there if you want to and make sure it's seated properly. And you can use this time to clean your fretboard too. A lot of times what I'll do is use 0000, zero, zero, zero steel wool and just brush it off real quick and that really gives the frets a nice shine and cleans off the fretboard too. You can also use um, cold pressed linseed oil if you have an ebony fretboard or if you have a rosewood fretboard you can use just lemon oil. If you have a maple fretboard which is kind of rare on acoustics you don't need to really do anything about that if it's finished. But come down here put the string through the hole right there and what I usually shoot for is to have at least two wraps around the post here. And that usually gives me about that much, two or three, maybe four. And the first wrap, I just kind of do manually right here. That saves time cranking. And that first loop should go over the top of the loose end of the string here. There's a reason for that, I'll show you. And then I usually kink this up just to kind of get it out of the way as I'm cranking. So I start cranking. And when the loose end comes around again, I try to make the second wrap go under the end of that loose string. What it's gonna do is get that loose end in a bind and keep it from slipping. And there are a lot of different techniques and ways that you can change strings. This is just what I found that works really good for me over the years. And I'll show you why here in a second, why I do this. And usually what happens when you get it a little bit tight, sometimes this bridge pin will pop up a little bit. Not always but just make sure it's seated down there real good and you can pull on it. And then once you get it kind of up to pitch, just pull on it a little bit like this to seat the string and help it stretch out a little bit. And this is why I do the over under method here on the end of the string. When you do that, what we can do is just bend the string back and forth and just breaks off. And that way there's nothing sticking out that can poke you or stab you. You can also use the clipper on the end of your string water too if you want. All right, let's do another one. Let's go to the A string. Just unwind it. And the A string on a set of Deodarios is always red. So that makes it easy to remember where it goes again. What you can do is push down and that kind of unseats the string and then it's really easy to get that bridge pin out, super easy. Let's pull it out. Put the string in, seat it, 
pull up and then push down on the bridge pin. Should be good. Line that hole up. Again, leave, you know, enough slack to get two or three or four wraps on there. Then I do the first one manually over the top of the loose end. And then just crank the rest. Make sure all subsequent wraps are uh, below the loose end there. So it looks like we'll get about three this time, which is perfect. Once you have it close to up to pitch, stretch it out, make sure it seats well, make sure that bridge pin stays on in there good and seats itself. And then this one I'll just clip. That's good to go. Now move on to the D string. So your bridge may be different looking than this one. That's fine. Some bridges on acoustic guitars are pinless. There you go. See, sometimes it's gonna be hard to get that ball right up kinked with that bridge pin, so watch out for that. But and that's not gonna to be too different, whatever guitar you have. And again, on the the higher strings, I like to get more wraps around there if I can, just to kind of ensure that they don't slip. I'm gonna give it a stretch, make sure that's seated well. whichever way you want. And that's it for changing strings on a steel string acoustic guitar. Let me show you how to do this for nylon string acoustic guitar next. So I have a classical nylon string guitar here and the main difference for changing strings on this kind of guitar is the fact that you have to tie them to the bridge usually. And here's my low E and my high E for this guitar. I'm gonna change both of them for you because they can be a little bit different, but the overall Everything else is pretty much the same. I'm just gonna take this old string off. And nylon strings take a lot longer to stretch out because they actually stretch than steel strings. These can stretch for like two, three days a week depending on how much you're playing with all these, right? So just be aware of that. Your guitar isn't broken or anything if it keeps going out of tune with nylon strings. It just takes a little bit longer for them to break in. Okay. What I usually do is depending on who changes the strings before you, they could be put on a little bit different way. So just get that old string out of there. And then come down here to the bridge and take the old one off, untie it. And you're gonna see on a nylon string that one end is wound really tight and the other end will have a spot that's usually not wound so tight. The tight end goes on the bridge, not so tight end goes up towards the headstock of the guitar. So stick the string through the hole on the bridge. You can also do it the other way if you want, just feed it through that way. And then you have to tie it on and all you really do is reach around and then pull through. And on the lower strings, I usually give it at least two. And then you want the fold to lay flat on the guitar. And pull it through. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. You could even do more if you wanted to. I find that two usually works for me and doesn't slip. 
then come down here to this end of the guitar, feed it through. And you're gonna to wanna to get it in a bind on this end too, and I'll show you how to do that. Just so it doesn't slip. And you're gonna feel this kind of grow or stretch as you get more tension on it, so. So the first step is to get one wrap around. And I usually go to the right on this string, as far as on the post here, on the right side of the loose end. There you go. And what I'll do here is take the loose end of the string and shove it through the part that I'm winding just to keep it in a little bit extra bind, some tension on it, right? And that'll help hold it in place. And it's gonna stretch a lot. You're gonna be probably surprised if you've never changed strings on an nylon string guitar before. And watch, as soon as I pull this, it's already stretching quite a bit there, so. And then you can, what you can do is either choose to use the other strings on the end here to hold this extra bit down, or you can clip it. That's usually what I do just to get it out of the way. It's up to you though, doesn't matter. And then the same thing for this end. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes because you gotta see which side it's most accessible from. And then just clip that and you're good to go. And again, it's gonna stretch a lot, so just get it up to pitch and let it sit for a while playing on it. Oh, kind of harder will help it stretch in a little bit better, a little bit easier. So let's do the high E string now. The only real difference between the wound strings and the non-wound strings are the number of times you wrap it around here. I usually do it at least three or four times. And truth be told, a lot of times what I'll do instead of messing with all this, I'll just cut the string. It just saves me some time. And that's good for that. And then this end, sometimes it's just a little bit tricky to get done. Depends on how the person strung it before you. Okay, so same story here. Again, I like to have this at least three times, maybe more. As long as the winding is tight and it's not gonna slip, that's the main thing. So that's three. I'll probably do one more just to be safe. Yeah, that's four. But again, just come around and then slip it through there a couple times. It should be good. And then just come to this end of the guitar, stick it through, and start cranking. Not a lot of slack left on this, but let me get to it if I can. There you go. And again, it's a little bit trickier on um, the unwound strings here, but if you can, getting it through and under the string just to get it in a bind is a really great thing to do, just to keep it from slipping. Okay, there, under. And 
you can hear that one just slipping as I even, or stretching out and seeing yourself as I tune it up. So again, it takes a now it takes a lot longer to stretch out and see themselves. So don't be concerned if this keeps going out of tune for a few days. It'll go less and less. Cool. That's it for changing strings on the acoustic guitar. Don't be afraid to try this for yourself. Probably the worst thing that can happen is that you break a string or something like that. And since that's the case, it's probably a good idea if you go buy strings to pick up an extra pack in case it does break, you don't have to run all the way back to the store. I'll see you in the next lesson where we're gonna talk about guitar intonation. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to check out this entire series, get some motivation and continue with your positive momentum, you can click the link in the video description where you'll get step-by-step -step video lessons that take all the confusion away of what to learn next, fun jam tracks to give you clear musical goals, and community support when you need it. Just go ahead and click the link in the description for all the details.